Welcome to Take Me to the Cloud, a place for business professionals to hear insights and best practices from industry experts that combine cloud systems, operations, supply chain, and finance. Hi, folks. Uh, Wally Merkus here with uh, with them. Uh, joining me today is uh, Steve Junak and uh, John Shepherson from SWK Technologies. And we're going to talk today a little bit about the food industry and food manufacturing and these companies. Certainly, we're getting a lot of interest from our companies uh, here at Witham. And we brought these experts in today to talk a little bit more about uh, software and software selection. Hey, John, when you think of this, maybe maybe kick us off here a little bit and let's start talking about what kinds of things folks are looking for and what the issues are in this space. Sure. Thanks, Wally. You, you know, in, in previous uh, podcasts that we've participated in, we've talked about inventory visibility and, and the effect of the pandemic. And, and what all that has done is created, um, you know, demand in food companies to um, replace their outdated ERP systems. Uh, almost all of them have outdated ERP systems. Steve, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, basically, you know, especially with the pandemic, as people tried to, to shift how they were doing business and everything, uh, a lot of companies found out that what they have is outdated. Um, it doesn't meet the needs of, of today's uh, uh, processing, et cetera. Um, you know, uh, first and foremost, one of the things that, that came up was that, you know, if your ERP is on premise versus in the cloud or a software as a solution, a SaaS system, uh, it created a lot of challenges to get people to be able to work remotely. You know, we had to put a lot of infrastructure in place to be able to allow people to stay at home and, and do their normal work. Uh, and it took some companies quite a while to really get up to speed again, uh, you know, given the fact that offices were closed, et cetera. Um, there's also still a healthy mix of standardized and customized ERPs out there. Uh, you know, some are just out of the box and don't really match the industry. Some are so heavily customized that, that as new technology, new uh, um, uh, functionality comes available, you can't really do anything with it because you're too customized, uh, you know. Um, what you really need to do is kind of look at what your product is and, and say, is it meeting the things that I need today? You know, and first and foremost, um, most most companies need product development. If we're going to survive in this industry or in this economy, we've got to react quickly, develop new products, get them to market faster, et cetera. And if your ERP system's not helping you with that, then you're probably in the wrong system. Uh, a second thing is traceability. You know, we all have to deal with FISMA, recall. A lot of new things coming out. In an earlier podcast, we talked about the new uh, regulations in food safety along with the new era of, of food safety blueprint that's in uh, comment period right now. Um, some of that's going to become law, and it's going to mean that all your stuff has to be traced through electronic systems so that you can generate electronic records. Um, it really amazes me, too that how many companies really don't use the power of the system they already have. So maybe it's just a matter of, of really assessing where you're at with your current system and can we do better with it? We may not have to throw <clears throat> the whole system out, but we may want to look at it and make sure that we're using it to the full cap capability that it, it uh, can handle. Um, you know, we also have to look at how to get digitized. Uh, big word nowadays is what, what, how are you doing this digital transformation in your company? You know, I have to have hard work, hardware and network software um, versus hosting. You know, hosting is the way to go. Get it out of here. Let somebody else will deal with it. Um, you know, do I do internal IT or do I use IT as a service? Do I have ERP systems and ancillary products uh, like Office, Office 365, um, other products that you have, they all have to begin to talk together because we don't want to have these disparate uh, different uh, uh, software systems. We want to have integration between them all. So really, I mean, you, you really need to take a look at it and say, hey, we, we should really consider an assessment of all our systems uh, to see how effective they are at meeting today's requirements. So, you know, those are some, some things that we really need to investigate. And, 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 you know, how do we go about doing that, Wally? Yeah, I think I, I like what you said there. You kind of kind of put a whole lot of things in there, but really you, you had three things, you know, fix what you have. Uh, is there something wrong with what you have? Can we do a health check of some kind? Um, what could we do? What, what else is out there that might help me? And whether that be a uh, task specific, one specific task uh, or purpose built type solution, mm -hmm. or whether that be holistically looking at the entire ERP or simply that, what do I need to get to a new ERP? 
So many times when we're going through this, uh, this part of a, of, a, of a journey, John, you and I, when we're going through that cycle, when we're first meeting new customers, I'm, I almost bucket it, if you will, into this sort of current state, where you're at today and where are you trying to get to? What's, what's your future state? How do you look at some of these customers and what are some of the things that you've noticed as you're going through that part of the conversation with them? Well, uh, Wally, almost everybody that comes to us, um, you know, they talk about inventory visibility, they talk about supply chain, they talk about, you know, business intelligence and, and dashboards and the lack of those kinds of things. Um, you know, what, what it really comes down to is, is automation and helping people do their jobs better, faster, you know, more efficiently. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, if we're not doing that, it's, it's, just, it's just a little piece of, uh, you know, software. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, you know, it's interesting. We've got a, um, I'm just trying to think of a few t uh, in bits and pieces of, of info that I've had lately where the system almost seemed to slow them down. So, for example, in the manufacturing process, sometimes the traceability piece, like solving for traceability, means I have a gate going in and out so I can actually track it, that digital footprint, if you will. And it'd be interesting to see if machine learning and AI and those kinds of tools are going to help in that environment. They're not there, seemingly not there yet, but what are you doing for customers, say, and this might be Steve uh, and or John, but what are you doing for customers that are looking for more speed and throughput of that food process manufacturing, less, I don't want to, I don't want to have to scan something in and out, or I just want to get there and still meet my requirements that are, you know, governed and et cetera. Steve, maybe you want to take that one. Yeah, so so um, from that perspective, you know, RF solutions that are out there allow us to be able to go ahead and produce product off a line, get it palletized, to get an RF label on it so that when it, it runs through a, 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 a scan area, um, now we're talking scan areas, it automatically reads the product on the, on the pallet, what the lot code is, what the quantities are, et cetera. So I no longer have to key that in. Um, it grabs it as it goes down the line. And, and puts it into to inventory at that point as a completed product. Um, there's a lot of ways to digitize how we're doing things and how we want to capture things. Um, same on the front end. Uh, you know, if you're if you're in a food uh, process situation where we're dumping pounds and pounds or or uh, gallons of liquids, et cetera, you know, your meters and or your scanning. Again, a pallet with a pallet tracker. We can just scan that pallet uh, tracker of ingredients, and boom, it's issued into the into uh, into your recipe, et cetera. So. So there's a lot of opportunity out on the production floor to digitize, to, to transform from, from paper and pen and or, uh, you know, going to a keyboard and punching in numbers that, that can be done automatically. Love yeah, it. I think, I think one of the mistakes people make, Wally, is trying to bite off too much, right? Um, that kind of goes to your point of, you know, um, uh, I don't want to slow down. So, you know, for, for me and, and, and Steve, well, what we try to do is, really have people face properly where we're, we're doing the things that are getting the most bang for the buck and, and the more elegant things maybe we say for phase two or three down the road and, and where, you know, ERP is not a uh, one in time, once and done kind of thing. You know, it's a, a, a continuous improvement. Well, but that's, that's uh, I mean, very consistent stepped approach, phased approach, mm -hmm. however you want to look at it. Um, maybe we talk about the first step, because I think that's a lot of what I'm doing with the strategy side when I'm doing work with our customers is what is that first step? Um, how much do I bite off in that first project and things like that? So if, from, from our side, what we tend to do is use a sort of try to understand what is the biggest bang for the buck. But we generally always come back to, for the most part, um, debits and credits got to be there in some way, shape or form. We have to have an accounting. We have to be able to buy, buy things. We have to be able to sell things, et cetera. So that core kernel, whatever that, whether that be their existing or net new needs to be established and in place. And right. then, and then we get on to the inventory. So maybe talk, I mean, that's sort of our approach. Do you guys see it any differently? Do you guys try to go at it differently? How do you go about trying to determine what their first use case or first project looks like? Well, it, it really depends, you know, if, if um, uh, it depends on how um, prepared the customer is when they come to us. You know, if um, uh, we have a very mixed bag of um, folks that are coming to us with somebody like you who have already prepared everything and have told us what the first phase is. Right. Um, if that doesn't exist, then it's really a wide variety of, I'm not prepared at all. 
And um, in those cases, we may refer them to somebody like you, Wally, to where if they come to me on the first call and they can't tell me anything about the requirements, they're not ready yet. Um, you know, it, and then late, you know, there's there's all kinds of in between of I'm kind of prepared. And if they're kind of prepared or prepared, I can really help them and Steve can help them flesh those out. But if they're not prepared at all and haven't looked at their processes, and have the secretary call and and get info about ERP systems. It's not very efficient. Nice. I, I like I like that your thought there. It's funny. Um, when I think of something like say hard goods, where I'm doing say a wholesale distrib distributor and I'm doing just hard goods, I can jump off with an opinion pretty quickly because you know there, there's not much change in variant from wholesale distributor to wholesale distributor. Even right. though even though when you talk to them, many of them feel like they're unique. But right. at the end of the day, they are buying product, they are storing product, they are shipping product. At the end of the day, there's right. there's more nuances to that for sure. Whereas in the food side, with shrink, with government, let you know, recalls, all the different things and the variance in the velocity of getting there. Does my line need to be cooled as I'm preparing? Does, you know, all those different pieces. Where does my inventory stay? So the entire value chain needs to be considered all the way from supply through to the outbound and outbound logistics, et cetera. So I always find it harder with food because to your point, John, if they're not ready, they're not ready. And many right. of them don't even know what they don't know at this point. And so I find my conversations with most of uh, most folks in this in this space, in the food manufacturing space, to be one of they're not quite sure what they need to get. They've looked at. You know, they've looked at various projects, whether it be, you know, X3, whether it be QAD, whether what, whatever it is, they've looked at something and um, they're, they're, they're sort of reading off of that and they're regurgitating what that ERP has said on the website rather than what their actual requirements are. That's what I yeah. find that connects to folks too. Yeah, hard, hard to disseminate, right, in our role to what level of degree we need to get involved with and get someone like Steve, who's an expert in the, in this industry, and bring them in and, and really have them dig into what functionality they're trying. Right. I mean, you know, there's there's things that can be missed that, that seem a minutia, but things like catch weight for a meat producer is a deal breaker. And if right. you don't dig in enough there, it's going to be a problem. Interesting. Interesting. I like it. So... I th there you have it. I think, you know, uh, as we walk away from this, you know, if I close it out, I'll turn it to each of us just to kind of close out. But for me, the biggest thing here is let's make sure we understand what the project is, make sure what you're trying to solve for. And I try to break it down to use cases and align on the use cases. I liken it almost, guys, like if we were building a spreadsheet on a budget, I don't debate the budget numbers. I debate the assumptions going into the budget and the assumptions are what makes the budget. The numbers just fall out. It's the same thing here, I find. Let's debate what you're really trying to get to and solve for and solve for those use cases. And then all of those other things, the 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 I would like to have, um, we'll deal with all those, like you said, John, in a subsequent phase. So John, let me turn it over, or, or Steve, let me turn it over to you before we turn it to John and close us out on this. Yeah, so so I agree, Wally. I mean, that's the whole thing is 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 it gets so easy to get caught up in the idea of a ERP and everything it can do for you, and and it's magical in you know in thought, but but really, you know, your goal is to to find something that's going to solve like eighty five to ninety percent of what your daily problems are. The other ten percent are are wishes and or, uh, or not even necessary most of the time because once they really understand what the new ERP can do. That last 10% tends to fade away because it's not even a problem anymore. Uh, but you got to get them to get, get away from that 10% and just look at that, that core of what they need. And in order to do that, they need to understand what they need. And sometimes that's really difficult for a company to do on their own. Yeah, and uh, you know, following up with that, I think um, a company's got to know their current process as well. Um, really know what's going on in the trenches, not just the end result. Um, and know what they want from the end of the day, right? As, you know, what are the reports they want? What do they want to see, you know, at the end of the month, quarter, year? And if you can't get there, then reach out to somebody like Wally that can that can help you get there. Yeah. Um, you know, some people have folks internally that have done it before and can do this. And you know, we see people completely prepared, but most of the time, um, if they're not, then they need to reach out to a professional. Like it. Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate your time today and joining us on today's podcast. So Take Me to the Cloud is a, 
is a, is a podcast we've been doing for a while and it's exciting to have professionals like yourselves join us and thank you very much really do appreciate it thanks wally thanks wally you've been listening to take me to the cloud thanks for joining us don't forget to subscribe to be alerted of new episodes for more information visit with